Hey, uh, several people have actually been commenting on some of my older videos, particularly the ones involving connections of things like um, older analog component connections and things like that, particularly when you're trying to deal with things like hooking up uh, old Wii's or old Xbox 360's and specifically. And a lot of people have been saying that while the Wii and the Xbox 360 come with cables like this, that are they just simply aren't compatible with modern smart televisions. What to do if, let's say, for example, you've got a new 4K smart TV and you simply don't see the connections for these cables? Well, I'm going to show you what to do now. Most HGTVs I've come across since about the year, oh, say, 2006 have pretty much always come with inputs like this and inputs like this for analog RCA connections. That's not so much the case, apparently, with these new 4K televisions. This is a Samsung 4K Smart TV. We're going to be using it for the purposes of this demonstration. I know that not everybody is going to have this particular model TV that might be used in or watching this video, but again, this is just being used for an example. However, I have noticed that a lot of people actually do have this particular model TV or one similar enough to it. Samsung made a lot of these. They're good. They have 4K, they have HDR support, they have app support, smart TV support. And they are very, very, very reasonably priced, even at the very large screens models. So a lot of you guys actually may have this particular model TV and you might wonder, how can I, what are you going to use it for? What can I connect to and how can I get the most out of what I'm connecting to it? Well, if you look really closely, you're going to see I've pretty much got a 4K PS4 and a 4K Xbox One X, as well as the Nintendo Switch hooked up to this particular model. For anybody who might be interested in getting something else or connecting something older to it, what do you do? Well, stay tuned because we're going to show you. If you've got a newer smart TV, this is what the back of it might actually look like. I know you're probably going to say, wow, three HDMI connections and all of them are being used. There's probably a coax here, maybe a USB connection. But where are the component connections that I need in order to use my older console? I don't see them. Well, the thing is, is that they are there. You're just not looking hard enough. If you look right here, you'll see that there are in fact component and composite connections for this particular model TV. And I'm sure your TV probably has a similar configuration. However, if you look, you don't see the blue, green, red, white, red, or yellow inputs on your television. What does this mean? You can't just hook this directly into your television, can you? Well, you can, but you need to do something else first. When you got your smart TV, it came with a little package that included a remote control, a manual, and a couple of other things next to the battery that you may or may not have thrown out. Those are the adapters that you need in order to make use of the component and composite connections on your smart TV. And these are it. These are the adapters I was talking about. As you can see, these are the component and composite adapters that you get for a Samsung Smart TV. Yours may look different, but in all honesty, they're probably going to be the same, if not similar enough. Now, if you look at them really closely, you'll notice that my particular model TV has two of them. And they look a little bit odd, but I'm going to break it down and explain it to you really quick what each adapter is. First off, this right here is a dedicated composite connector. This is designed for... Uh, 480i uh, televisions or possibly game consoles like the Nintendo 64 or the uh, PlayStation 1, of course, or perhaps or just a, a standard definition non-progressive scan DVD player. As you can see here, you can notice two particular outputs that just stand out automatically, the white and the red. Those are the two audio channels, so this cable support stereo audio. You'll notice that this particular input here, however, has two different colors, a yellow color and a green color. Now, I'll explain what the green color does in just a second, but for the purposes of this video, if you want to just simply use this adapter and you're using a standard definition device that only uses a yellow cable, then simply just hook only this connection into the television and put the yellow into that. Now, if you're using a device that supports composite video, such as a, or a, a DVD player that uses progressive scan without HDMI, 
or a uh, component only H, you know, Xbox uh, 360 co console, a progressive scan Wii, then this is the cable that you're going to need to add to your system. This is the component adapter for the television. As you can see, this includes a second red and a blue connection. Now, if you're going to be using progressive scan television or high definition television through component or composite, you need both adapters connected. In which case, you would simply use the red for audio, the red, the white for audio. This would be used as green for your green input, red for video, and blue for video. Combine both of these together and you'll have a working component connection for your television. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to be using these. These are our PSP to component uh, video cables. They pretty much work exactly the same as any component cable, so they're fine for this demonstration. A couple of things you might want to notice is, is that you're going to notice in any of these type of cables that there are going to be two different reds. As you can see here, you can see a red or two red cables, a white cable, a blue cable, and a green cable. And that may confuse a lot of people. But usually in any cable, specifically first party cables, you're going to notice some type of way to differentiate the white cable uh, the white cable with the with one of the red cables. Uh, as you can see here on this cable, you can see that it has uh, this cable bundled with the white cable and it says audio. That means that this red is specifically meant for the right channel audio output for the television. That means that this red, which is bundled together with the green and blue connections, is meant for the video output. So it differs cable to cable to know specifically. And if you're using custom cables, you're probably going to be able to keep track of where your reds are connected for when you're dealing with, let's say, um, a VCR or something like that or a DVD player. But... When it comes to consoles that have specific outputs and specific cables, always look really hard to see where your white matches up with your red or where your blue and green matches up with the red. You're going to want to connect those to the, you know, to the similar connections. First off, we want to do is you want to separate the red and the white connections, meaning the two audio connections. You want to make sure that those are separate. As you can see here, the PSP cable, and I know that the PS3 cable does the same thing, and a couple of other, well, simply has bundled, the Wii cable does this too. They bundle the two audio connections together. So now we know that these two are specifically dedicated to audio, which means that these three are left for video. What we're gonna do is, and I'm gonna try to do this as best as I can, we're gonna match up, this is, this we know is gonna be the red and the white specifically dedicated to audio. So we're gonna match these two up and connect them, which I can't do with only one hand. We're going to connect the, uh, the red here and the blue here for video connection. And the green adapter will go on the green cable here. And I would show you inserting them, but I only have one free hand and I don't have a tripod. So you'll simply just have to line it up that way. But that's typically how you would connect these adapters. And with the help of some clever editing, after a second or two, you can see this is what the connections look like here. You can see how the audio connections are matched up on this particular adapter with the green for video. And you can see here that the blue and red video outputs are connected to this adapter. And that's basically it. This is now ready to connect to the television. One last thing I think you guys might ask me is going to be, hey Maniac, um, my device is an Xbox 360 or some other type of dual output device that can do both composite and component, which means that I have a cable that has a yellow connection and a red, blue, and green connection. What do I do in that case? In that case, you don't use the yellow connection cable at all. Either disconnect it or don't install it in the first place. Only use the red, blue, and green connections for video. This particular adapter for the Samsung can only do either composite or component. It can't do both. If you needed a TV that does both, you need to get a new TV. Now that we've got the cables all set up with the adapters, we're going to plug them into the television. Now, as you can see here, Samsung is good enough to tell us specifically what color cables go into what socket so as you can see there you can see a powder blue and a yellow connector so we're going to use those to connect them to the television here we're just going to sync them both in there now there's a bit of a warning before 
um, we do any of this, if you're only using an, an AV connection with a yellow cable, then you don't need to hook up the component adapter, the blue component adapter. The reason why this may be the case is, at least I'm assuming with this is just how Samsung televisions are, that Samsung simply will not engage a composite signal if the component adapter or the component portion of the adapter is plugged into the television. Once you have the adapters properly connected to your television, you should be able to access them using the sources menu on your smart television. You can either hit source on the menu or uh, you know, on your remote control or you can just simply select it from your lower home bar. But this is the connection that you're going to want. Component. If you've thrown them out, you're out of luck because each television is custom for its own adapters. You might be able to maybe contact your television's manufacturer to get, at your own expense of course, some adapters that'll fit the television. And that is basically it. That's how you get a older console or older uh, device basically to hook up to a modern day 4K smart TV. Again, your device may vary. It's probably gonna have different types of adapters that look differently depending upon the model and size of your television. This was just an example for a TV that I think is probably very popular and rightfully so, it's a good TV. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Could you spot the difference on beard growth as to what I shot before Kineticon and what I shot after Kineticon? Post a comment in below on which takes you think are which. Until next time, guys, my name is Kinetic, uh, my name is Maniac with GamingSess.net. Take care, over and out.